Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I wanna to show you how you can both get and use Microsoft Publisher. I'm creating this video based on popular demand. Many of you, the viewers, asked for a video on Microsoft Publisher, so I'm delivering. Once again, I create my list of videos to create based on feedback from viewers like you. Now, first off, what is Microsoft Publisher? Well, with Microsoft Publisher, you can create polished and professional designs and layouts. So what do I mean by that? Well, you could create things like greeting cards, newsletters, flyers, posters, marketing materials, the list goes on and on. And best of all, when you create any of those, how it looks in Publisher is what it looks like when you publish it or you export it. Now this might sound very similar to what Microsoft Word does. What is the difference between Publisher and Word? Well, Microsoft Publisher is much more focused on design and layout, while Microsoft Word is more focused on text composition and proofing. Within the publishing space, you have a few big competitors. You have Adobe InDesign. You also have Quirk Express. Publisher, compared to those, is a small minnow, but it still holds its own in terms of publishing, and it's also a lot more inexpensive. All right, well, why don't we jump on the PC, and I'll start off with showing you how you can get Publisher. Here I am on my PC, and first off, I wanna show you how you can get Microsoft Publisher. If you already have Microsoft Publisher, you can use the chapters down below to skip ahead. I'm gonna show three different ways that you can get Microsoft Publisher. I'm gonna start with my preferred way all the way to my least preferred way. Now first off, navigate to the website office.com. Once you land on office.com, let's click on Get Office. This will drop us on a page that lists out various subscription plans that give you Microsoft Publisher. The first option is the Microsoft 365 Family Plan, and it's about $100 a year, and that includes Microsoft Publisher. Now, along with Microsoft Publisher, you also get several other apps, including Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and others. You also get up to six terabytes of cloud storage space, and you could also share it with up to six other people. So if you take full advantage of that sharing, the price isn't actually all that bad on a per person basis. There's also an individual or what they call the personal plan for 70 a year. That also includes publisher. It also includes all the different apps, but here you only get one terabyte of cloud storage space and you can't share it with others. It's just for one person. I personally have the Microsoft 365 family plan and that's how I get Microsoft Publisher. Let's say that you don't like signing up for subscriptions and you'd rather just pay a one-time fee and be done with it. Microsoft does offer Publisher as a standalone application. If you head to the following website, and I have a link in the description as well, so you don't have to type in all this gobbledygook, you can come here and you could just purchase a license to Microsoft Publisher and a license for Publisher runs for $140 a year. If that still feels too expensive, the third method that I wanted to mention is you can go on to eBay or similar websites and you can buy older versions of Microsoft Publisher. The downside is it is an older version. Perhaps some functionality won't be there, but if you're trying to save money and you're very cost conscious, that is another approach you can take. Now, one thing I do wanna call out though, with Microsoft Publisher and the subscription plans, compared to the competitors in the space, if you look at Adobe InDesign, that starts for $21 a month. Quirk Express goes for $395 as a one-time payment. So all in all, whichever path you decide to take, Publisher is fairly good value compared to all the other offerings out there. Now that we've talked through the different ways you can get Publisher, I wanna show you how you can install Publisher on your computer. Once again, let's head to the website office.com and then now, once you have your subscription, click on the sign in button. You'll be prompted for a username and password. Go ahead and log in. Once you log in, you'll land on the authenticated version of office.com and now that you're a subscriber, up in the top right hand corner, you'll see an option that says install office. Let's click on this. This drops me on account.microsoft.com and here I can install Office on my computer. Now, when I install Office, this gives me all of the different Office applications. So I get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, I get Outlook, Publisher, and Access. So I can't install Publisher just as an individual app. Instead, I have to install it as a bundle. 
With Microsoft Publisher, it only comes as a desktop app. There's no online counterpart. So to launch and start using Microsoft Publisher, we need to launch it on our PC. Now, once you've installed Office, the easiest way to launch Publisher is to simply go down to our taskbar, and then within the search field, let's type in Publisher. Once you type in a few letters, you should see the best match appear for Microsoft Publisher. We can simply click on that, and that'll now launch Microsoft Publisher. If this is an application that you feel like you're gonna use often on the taskbar, you can right click on Publisher and then you can pin it to the taskbar. That way you'll have easy access back to Publisher in the future. Once we launch Publisher, we land on the start page for Publisher. And a little fun fact, for those of you who have watched any of my videos in the past, you probably know that I used to work at Microsoft. And when I worked at Microsoft, one of the projects that I led was rolling out these new start pages across all of the different Office products on the web, on Mac, and also on PC. And when I say start pages, that includes things like the home view, the new view, and the open view. So with all of that said, I hope you like the start pages because this is a project that I drove. If you have any thoughts or feedback on it, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I think it'd be interesting to see what all of you think. However, if you do have critical feedback, keep in mind I no longer work at Microsoft, so I won't be able to act on it. Within the home view, you have a few different options here. Home contains the most common actions that you'll take when you start using Publisher. For instance, here you could launch into a blank document or a blank publisher file, and we're gonna do that in just a moment. Here you could select more blank sizes, and then I have a list of some of the most popular templates. If I click down on more templates, I can see an even broader set of templates. Down below, I can see all of the recent publisher files that I've worked on. I can even pin files and see that in a separate tab. If I have quite a few publisher files, in my case, I only have one, but imagine that I had many, many different publisher files that I've worked on. I can use the search field to quickly search across all of my files. Over on the left-hand side, if I click on new, this will give me an even more comprehensive view of all the different types of new files that I can create. Once again, I have my blank documents, but you'll see a more comprehensive set of templates. I could search for different templates or I could use suggested searches to find templates. Using templates is a very easy way to get started with Publisher. It could turn out that there's a template that does exactly what you want it to do. For instance, if it's your mom's birthday, you can use this and simply change the number to match the age of your mom and then you're set to go. It couldn't be any easier than that. The last action over here on the left hand side is open and when you click on open, this will allow you to navigate through OneDrive, through SharePoint, through your PC to find publisher files that you might have created in the past. You can also use this to get back to files, but once again, you should be able to do most of what you need to get done directly here on the home screen. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna click on a new blank document. For this example, one of the examples that I use in many of my tutorial videos is I have the Kevin Cookie Company, and one thing that's really been missing from this Kevin Cookie Company is we really need a compelling flyer that drives more traffic into our stores, and I think Publisher is the perfect tool to use to create that. This drops me into a blank publisher and a blank publisher file isn't gonna help me sell cookies, so I need to design a really compelling flyer. Now, I'm gonna walk through a lot of the functionality, but there is very, very much functionality within publisher. I won't be able to touch on everything, but by going through this example, you should know the basics on how to get started in publisher. Now, first off, I just have this white background and I want something more compelling and interesting than this. And so I wanna insert a background. It turns out that backgrounds sit under the tab page design. Let's click on page design. This opens up the page design ribbon and all of these different controls allow me to modify what the design of the page looks like. In my situation, I wanna add a background, so I'm gonna go all the way over to the right-hand side and click on background on the ribbon. I see a bunch of different options. I currently have no background set. I could set a solid background, I could set a gradient background, or I could click on more backgrounds. Now, I want this to be a really slick and good-looking flyer, so I'm gonna to have to go with more backgrounds. I don't just want a plain solid background. When I click on the background button, this opens up the format background dialog, and here I have a few more options, no fill, solid fill, gradient fill, 
Picture or texture fill, that one looks interesting. Let me click on that. Within picture, I see an option to insert a picture. Let's click on that. When I click on insert picture, this opens up the insert pictures dialog and I could insert pictures from my computer. I could insert stock images, that sounds interesting. I could insert online pictures and icons. I'm gonna go with the stock image. I'm sure those pictures are a lot better than what I can take. When I click on stock images, this opens up a stock images dialog. If you use any other applications like Word, PowerPoint, you'll see a similar stock image control in them. One of the neat things is these types of controls with stock images, they're common across all of the different Microsoft Office apps. Within the text field for stock images, because I am working on a cookie company, I'm gonna search for cookie and see what shows up. I have all of these stock images that appear related to cookies. I think a good background for my flyer is this one where it shows a person baking. I wanna to communicate to people that these are homemade cookies that we make on location, and this picture does the job. I'm gonna click on the picture. I see a check mark up here. Now I'm gonna click on insert. Once I click on insert, this brings me back to the format background dialog. I have the picture selected. Now let's click on okay. Look at that, I now have a beautiful background on my flyer. At the Kevin Cookie Company, we've done a whole bunch of research and we've found that by including pictures of delicious looking cookies, we can drive people to buy more cookies. So I absolutely need to include a photo of a delicious looking cookie on this flyer. How do I do that? Well, over here on the tabs, let's click on insert. This opens up the insert ribbon and within here, there are all sorts of different things that I can insert onto my flyer. For instance, I could insert tables I could insert photos, we'll do this in just a moment. I could insert shapes. You even have building blocks that you could build your flyer with or whatever content you're creating, such as page parts. You could insert calendars, borders and accents. You could even insert advertisements. There's lots of different things that you can insert. There's a text box, business information, word art. The list goes on and on on the different things that you can insert and you could experiment with this to see what it can do. In my case though, I wanna put a delicious looking cookie in and I don't have any cookie pictures on my computer so I'm gonna click on online pictures. This opens up the online pictures dialog and here I'm gonna search for cookie and I want it to sit on top of my background so I'm gonna type in transparent. Once I'm done I'm gonna click on enter and let's see what shows up. This opens up a whole bunch of delicious looking cookies. They all look like they were made at the Kevin Cookie Company and this looks like it matches our quality so I feel okay taking one of these pictures. You'll see over here that there's a checkbox next to Creative Commons only. When it's Creative Commons, that means that you can leverage this photo freely in any of your commercial flyers that you're pulling together. If you uncheck this, you'll get a much larger selection of photos, but they aren't necessarily royalty free and you can't reuse them. In my case, I'm pulling together a commercial flyer, so I'm gonna leave this checkbox checked. Now we have all these delicious looking cookies and ooh, I like this one here, it's a stack of cookies and maybe I could have some subliminal messaging where people get the idea that they wanna buy more cookies by seeing more cookies on the flyer. I'm gonna select this one. Once I'm satisfied with the selection, I'm gonna go ahead and insert this. This drops the cookies right dead center in the middle of my flyer. It's a little small, so let me click on the cookies and I'm gonna go ahead and expand it. Now you'll see when I select the cookies, this rectangle appears around it and I can drag it so I could increase the size of these cookies and I'm gonna make it really big just so all the detail stands out. That might be a little too big, so I'll make it a little bit smaller. When I have the cookie object selected, you'll see on the top ribbon that I'm within the format view. I have a whole bunch of different tools that I could use to format my cookies. For instance, I could apply different corrections to it. I could recolor my cookies. I don't know why I would ever wanna recolor my cookies because they look so delicious as is, but I have that option. I could go through and I could apply different frames to my picture. These are all similar controls to what you get in Word and then also PowerPoint. So you get these here as well. Here too, I could even crop the photo and it looks like there's a lot of extra space around the photo. So I'm just 
just going to crop the edges. Let's click on crop and then I'm going to pull this in so it's just a little bit tighter around my image. I also want to make sure that my image is directly in the center. To make it appear within the center, once again I select the object and it drops me within the format view. Over here I can click on align. I'm going to align it relative to the margin guides. So that's my current flyer size. I'll click on this. Then I could click on align again and I can align this in the center. So right now this image file is directly aligned in the center of my file. Now I know you might be thinking that including a picture of photos is good enough and this is already a really good flyer, but I wanna add text as well. And to add text, I can go to the home tab and within the home ribbon, there's an option to draw a text box. Let's click on this. Here now I could draw the text box wherever I want it to appear on my flyer. This is one of the key differences with Word. In Publisher it's more focused on design and layout and so I could position things wherever I want. Verse in Word it's much more of a structured format that's focused on text composition. For my text box, I need to come up with a line that I'm gonna use in my flyer, and I think maybe I say something like, deliciousness in every bite. Do you think that sounds good? I have my text in here now, and this text is gonna a little small to read, so let's make it a little bigger. So I'm gonna press Control A, or I could simply highlight all the text, and I'm gonna make it white, just so you could read it better. I want it to be accessible so other people can read it. And I'm also gonna increase the font size. Let me go up to, let's jump to maybe 40 and see how that looks. This font doesn't really look so good for a cookie company. I need something that's a little bit more playful and fun. So let me go through and I actually looked at the fonts ahead of time to figure out what font I think really works well for cookies. And it turns out there was one font that just really called my name and it's called Chunk 5. The reason I like it so much is that for every five cookies you eat, you'll likely gain some chunks. So I think that's very fitting for this company. Let me increase the size just a little bit more and position it on my flyer. I'm gonna select all of the text once again and let me go ahead and center it. When I select all the text, I can go up to alignment and I'm gonna align in the top center and that's looking pretty good so far. Now I have my tagline, I have a picture of cookies, I wanna include information about my company, and to do that, I'm gonna go back on the top tabs, I'm gonna click on insert, and this opens up the insert ribbon. Within here, I'm gonna now insert a shape, and this is where I'm gonna include the company name as well as our address. So I'm gonna click on shapes, and for this, I'm gonna insert a rectangle. Here, just like with the text box, I can draw the rectangle, and I'm gonna have it fill the entire bottom of my flyer. So I'm gonna go ahead, release it there. Now this blue clashes somewhat from my flyer, so I need to change the shape fill. Once again, when I select this rectangle object, on the top tabs on top, it drops me within the shape format view. Within here, let me click on shape fill, and I'm gonna go with maybe a dark gray color. I think that'll complement this poster well. Next, I see that there's a slight blue outline around my text box. To get rid of that, once again, I select the object. I'm gonna go to shape outline, and I'm gonna click on no outline. Look at that, that's looking pretty good. Next, I'm gonna click into the rectangle that I just inserted and I'm gonna insert information on the Kevin Cookie Company. I inserted the Kevin Cookie Company name and the address, but it's probably impossible to read, so I'm gonna press Control A to select all of the text. I'm gonna click on the Home tab on top and let me change the color to white for the text. I'm gonna increase it a little bit too, just so you can see it more easily. For the alignment, once again, I'm gonna select all of the text and I'm gonna right align this on the poster. Now that I've right aligned the text, you'll see that there's not that much of a margin on the side. I wanna add a little bit of a margin. I'm gonna click on this object and once again, when I click on the object that exposes additional tools on the top, I'm gonna click on the one for text box. Within text box under alignment, there's an option for margins. Let's click on that. I have a few different options from none to narrow to moderate to wide and I could customize it as well. Let's try wide margins to see how this looks. 
That looks a little better. My text isn't hugging the edge. I like the position of that. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna insert a little bit of fun on this poster and there's nothing that says fun like Cookie Monster. So to insert Cookie Monster, I'm gonna go right up on the top tabs, click on insert and this opens up the insert ribbon. Within here, I'm gonna click on pictures. This opens up a file picker on my computer and I happen to have a picture of Cookie Monster on my desktop. I'm gonna click on that and then click on insert. There's Cookie Monster on my screen. I'm gonna adjust the size of him just like I did before with the image of cookies, except this time I'm gonna make it smaller. I've made Cookie Monster a little smaller and I can pull him down now onto the bottom of my flyer and there he'll sit alongside the base of my flyer. One thing that you'll see is Cookie Monster appears on top of everything else. How did it determine that Cookie Monster was on top? Well, I inserted that item last so that appears on top. However, I can also go ahead and adjust the layers. When I click on the Cookie Monster object up here on the top ribbon, I'm back in the format view. Over in the arrange section, I can move items up and I can move items down in the layers. So here, if I send Cookie Monster backwards, I've put him behind the gray. If I move him backwards again, now Cookie Monster is hiding behind the cookies, that sneaky little guy, but I could bring him forward again to make him a lot more prominent on my flyer. Now, I personally think this flyer is looking very nice. One other thing that I could do is if I wanna zoom in and see all the details on my flyer, I could zoom in down here by clicking the plus button and that'll zoom in on my poster. If I use my mouse wheel, I could scroll up and down or I could use the scroll bar over on the right hand side. Now to zoom in and out, one of my favorite shortcut keys is pressing the control key on the keyboard and then moving the mouse wheel back to zoom out or forward to zoom in. Look at all of those details on the cookies and all those chocolate chips. Those look delicious. If you've never been to the cookie company, the Kevin Cookie Company, you have to visit sometime soon to try one of these cookies. My flyer now looks pretty good and I'm very satisfied with it. So what do I do with it next? Well, first off, I wanna save it. And to save it, we're gonna go up to the left-hand side and we're gonna click on File. This opens up what's called the Backstage and within here, I can click on Save As. When I click on Save As, I could click into a location where I wanna put it. So I could put it in OneDrive, SharePoint. I could even save it on this PC. I'm gonna save it on OneDrive so you can also access access this file as well if you wanna use this to experiment with Publisher. This opens up the Save As dialog and I'm gonna save this as the Kevin Cookie Company flyer and then save. I'm gonna replace the file that already exists with that name. This now saved my flyer. What else can I do with the flyer? Well, if I go back up to file, there are a few other things that I can do as well. I can also print a copy of my flyer. So maybe I print a few thousand copies of this and maybe if you could also access the file and print a few thousand copies of this, we could put these posters all over the world promoting the Kevin Cookie Company. I would really appreciate it and I bet that it'll help increase our store traffic. Along with printing the file, I can click on share. This allows me to share the file as an attachment with others. Alternatively, because I put the file in OneDrive, I can share a link to that file. That's probably a more efficient way of sharing than to attach the file. Down on the left-hand side, there's also an option that says export, and this is likely what you're gonna use most often when you're trying to provide the file with others. For instance, here within the export view, export view, you can export as a PDF or an XPS. When you export a PDF or XPS, it'll maintain the same look as what you have within Publisher. So it preserves all the fonts, the formatting, and the images. You can publish as an HTML. I'm not sure what you would do with an HTML page of a flyer, but that is an option that you can use. Here too, you could choose what file type you wanna export as. By default, I saved it as a publisher file, but you could also export this as say a PNG, a GIF, a JPEG. So if you wanna create images, say for the web, uh, or for say your Facebook page or your website, you can use Publisher to create images. Down below, one of the interesting ones is Pack and Go. You could save for photo printing. You could even save for a commercial printer and this will make sure that the resolution is appropriate for a very high quality printing. So you could save that here. And then lastly, there's also an option to Pack and Go for another computer. 
So you have lots of different ways you can distribute your publisher file. And once again, help me distribute the Kevin Cookie Company flyers. I would appreciate that so much. Now we've walked through a lot of the core functionality within Microsoft Publisher, and this should show you how you can get started and how you can start designing very nice looking flyers, greeting cards, posters, whatever it is that you're trying to create. I also wanna call out some of the more advanced functionality within Publisher that we didn't have a chance to touch on yet. When I click on insert within the insert ribbon, there's something called a catalog page. A catalog page is very nice. What you could do is you come up with one design and then you could show many different items that are in your catalog leveraging that design. So think of say a sales magazine where the design is the same and you have many pages with different products. Catalog pages allows you to do that. Over under building blocks, another thing that I think is very nice is you could insert page parts. So there are all these different parts that you could insert, whether it's a heading, whether it's a quote, whether it's a sidebar, a story, you can insert all of these into your design and they even have a large collection or gallery of other page parts that you can insert. So even if you're not a designer, you can very quickly insert nice designs into your publisher file. Next, another neat one is business information. When I click on this, on the ribbon, you can edit your business information. And then let's say you're designing many different flyers for your business using Publisher. You can simply insert your business information with one click using these different fields. Next, I'm gonna click on page design and I wanna call out another feature that's very nice. There's something over on the far right-hand side called master pages. And just like a master slide in PowerPoint, you can define what your master looks like and then all sub pages within your Publisher will leverage that master design. So it makes maintaining a large publisher file or many pages, it makes it much easier. The last item that I'm gonna to touch on is the item called mailings. Now within this video today, this is out of scope because there's a lot of functionality here. I've done a video on how you can do mail merge in Microsoft Word. If you're interested in learning more about how that works, I've included a link in the description. If you watch that video, you'll also be able to do a mail merge leveraging publisher but in a sense what you could do with mail merge is let's say that you want to send out a holiday card or a greeting card you can use mail merge to customize every single card let's say you have a hundred different friends they all have different names you could customize the card so it calls out their name maybe it mentions their kids names it puts in their address so it greatly simplifies creating customized messages for a very large number of messages once again I have a video on mail merge if that's something that interests you. Well, congratulations, you now have the tools you need to get started with Microsoft Publisher. All right, that was a quick look at how you can use Microsoft Publisher to create polished and professional looking designs and layouts. And as a side benefit, if you don't mind, if you followed this tutorial, maybe you could print a few copies of the Kevin Cookie Company poster out and help spread the word. Kidding aside, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a comment down below. That is, after all, where this video idea came from. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope to see you next time. Bye.